in the 3.5 SL version of the Ultima, you get most of the standard luxury features that you'd expect these days. Climate control, you know, auto up and down windows, sunroof, um, leather surfaces that are, you know, a step above vinyl. They're really um, nice. They smell pretty good. Uh, fit and finish in here is good. The rear seats, so, you know, a little outside of the feature set, but the rear seats in this car are surprisingly large. You know, sitting where I sit, I can do the sit behind myself patented or trademarked Chris Hawk test. No issues. It it has tons of room back there. Latch anchors for car seats I've put in here have been easy to get to, no problems. The rear seats fall down. And here's the other, I think, killer feature of the Ultima. The trunk is enormous. Uh, you know, when you look at the outside dimensions of this car, it does have quite a bit of overhang, both front and rear. I can report that the rear overhang is not wasted in any way. I put a full, you know, crib, a folding crib, which just the sides of it fold and the sides stay the same, not collapsible legs or anything, in the back of this thing, and the trunk closed. It's extremely spacious back there um, and the rear seats fold down with a little pull latch that's available uh, when the trunk's open so kudos to Nissan there again uh, they seem to have done a pretty good job with the packaging but back to the feature sets of this car so it also like I mentioned has the technology package which gets you uh, nav blind spot detection lane departure control um, and some kind of impact warning, although I've yet to see that function in any way, so I'm not actually sure what it does. The lane departure warning, which you can hear beeping as I sort of drive it lines, the, the big issue with it is it's very slow to react. You're way over the line before it starts to beep at you, so uh, in some ways it just winds up becoming more of a nuisance than I think it is a feature. It's not one of the better systems that I've experienced and it may actually be you know at the bottom of the range at this point. The nav works quite well. The interface that they've put in the Ultima isn't as good as what you'll find in some of the other Nissans. You know it's got a weird back button over on the right hand side which you wouldn't expect it. When you put the car into reverse it has a backup camera which is nice but it's in this really weird super fisheye view when you start it, and what's weird is on the screen, there's a button that says mod, which you'd expect to be able to press and have it switch between modes or whatever. Well, now there's actually a separate camera button that you have to go and push to get it into the rear view that you'd sort of expect. And as far as I can tell, there's no way to set that permanently. So from a technology perspective, it's again, I think about middle of the pack, the new Accord of course has stepped up its game pretty significantly there. Toyota's system I think is very comparable to uh, the Nissan's as well as the uh, Hyundai's I think sort of fits as well. The stereo is an upgraded Bose system that sounds pretty good you know it's got a full big amp back there. Uh, it's punchy at a middle volume level, it doesn't seem to have a huge amount of bottom end from a bass perspective, but you know, it does the job fine. It comes with XM radio in this version, um, and all that stuff is good. You, of course, get the new sort of standard steering wheel set of controls. Again, there, from an interface perspective, they've made some interesting decisions about what toggle switches do versus buttons. So there's a toggle switch you'd sort of expect to do volume control on the radio. Instead, there's two buttons down here you've got to press for the volume control. One of those things that as you live with the car, you'll completely become accustomed to. But from an initial uh, impressions perspective, it's a little weird in some ways because it just doesn't really follow the pattern that a lot of the other manufacturers have established for cars, you know, modern sort of car interfaces these days. On the outside of the Ultima, it really has adopted uh, much more of a family look to match with the Maxima and with the much more raked headlights, which in this car are high intensity, dis high intensity discharge lights that work quite well at night. Um, let me turn 
plane departure off because it just seems to beep arbitrarily. Uh, you get LED rear lights. That all looks good. It's got big 18-inch aluminum alloy wheels. It's a handsome enough uh, car. I think, again, it just comes down to personal preference as far as what you're looking for and how your car looks. Uh, it's definitely a step up from a maturity perspective over the last Ultima, though. It's, uh, you know, deserves to be pointed out that I think it's a more handsome car than the model it replaces, and, you know, it does a nice job. With all of that, where does it leave us? You know, we're not doing a real heads-up comparison of the Ultima versus the other cars that are out there on the market. But I can clearly report that this car at $32,000 comes with really an enormous amount of content and creature comforts. It's a good drive and in some ways may be the fastest car in the segment. And that's sort of in real world speed. I haven't checked all the instrument testing. I think this car may actually be the fastest to 60 in its class, but I, I just know from, you know, seat of the pants, feel that this car from 40 to you know, close course conditions, about 100 is really very quick. It would surprise a lot of cars which are full-fledged performance cars. So that aspect's good. Uh, you know, it's a really solid offering for Nissan in the midsize sedan field, and I think that's one of those things that I wouldn't have said about the previous generation Ultima. So if it's a car that you're in the market for, really give it a look. It's been a nice place to spend time and oh, the other report is is during the time that we've had it we've averaged about 24 25 miles to the gallon I think like 24.6 at this point and that's been a pretty solid mix of high speed highway driving it's important to note that it's been um, quick and you know city stop and go back roads driving as well as seeing how it does some of the sportier bits well so Again, uh, if you're in the market, it's definitely worth the look. As usual, Kevin Gordon here from autosavant.com, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon.